Hello friends, welcome again. Neo IAS is bringing you the daily current affairs session for the prelims and today we will be seeing the uses of 27th March 2018. Okay, we have a uh, lots of uh, some of the main topics, core subjects, you know, core topics that comes under this. And uh, enemy property, trifed, glyphosate and agrochemicals, Down syndrome, creme puri caves. So, a uh, mix of news and uh, some are politically important, you know, polity wise important, some are cultural wise important. So, let us have a deeper version of this. <coughs> so, first one is about enemy property. Now, what is enemy property? You have all the people who are reading this polity text may know about this enemy property. You know, uh, we had two big wars in 1960s you know, with Pakistan and uh, with China. So, government has stated them as enemy. So, those who, uh, the enemy countries are those which which had in, in, indulged in a aggressive or aggression towards India, like a war. So, China and in, uh, Pakistan were termed as enemy and the people who resided in, uh, who, the people of that country or the citizens of that country who resided in India were termed as enemies. So, uh, the enemy citizens, whoever owned properties in India, that property was categorized into enemy property. So, that is the whole concept about. Now, uh, actually the news is because as per the enemy property act uh, 1968, the government had started and there was amendment also, series of amendments. So, according to that or as per the act, government started process of monetization of more, more than 9400 enemy properties. Just imagine 9400 properties were there, more than that and government started to monetize. Monetize means selling of that or uh, you know uh, taking of. When we term some uh, money to the uh, property that means monetization and uh, the estimates say that it, it will be more than 1 lakh crore rupees. So, it is again a revenue for India that is the whole concept. So, as I told you enemy as a country that committed to an act of aggression against India and its citizens. So, the, all the that that terms all the scanners comes under this enemies and the property owned by them or their ancestors retrospectively is termed as enemy properties. Now a few things you have to remember, see uh, the responsibility of those enemy properties who left uh, India like Pakistani citizens who during the war or after the war ha had left India or they had to go uh, leave India, their property they, they may have owned some property so they, they that property, so those properties uh, should be given or should be under the administration of a custodian. So, custodian is a term that is defined in that act. So, custodian is nothing but it is not a person actually, it is an office under the central government. So, central government has a separate department or separate wing which is uh, altogether termed as custodian. So, custodian will be the administrator or the, the who is responsible of that property to maintain that to monetize that or anything related to administration. So, uh, that is main thing and the powers to this custodian or responsibilities to this custodian is given in the enemy property act 1968 and as I told uh, there were amendments uh, to include certain things to uh, you know disclude some uh, something and uh, many changes were done regarding the criteria or regarding the functions of custodians and many things else. So, uh, mainly three things if a statement has a contradiction which you should not have confusion is that see person who bought the enemy property suppose after 1962 war or 1965 war uh, in 1968 everything after the war in 1968 somebody bought that enemy property so that person is also considered as enemy or that property is also considered as enemy property so the act retrospectively says that all those properties even left out by the enemy people or somebody who bought that maybe uh, Indian citizen or some other foreigner or, or maybe the ancestors of I mean the generations of that enemy whoever buys that, that property is still enemy property and their responsibility will go to the custodian. The second thing, hairs of enemy that means uh, some grandfather have let, left uh, India during the war to Pakistan and her, his or her grandchildren. Uh, who who has the you know inheritance towards that property will also have this uh, negated uh, that property will also be under this custodian so it has a retrospective effect that is the term you have to use 
and for certain disputes majorly all the disputes are not coming under or cannot be heard in civil court so that is the three statements contradicting that you must know about this enemy property rest is polity topic you should have a thorough glance of this the next topic is about trifid now uh, ministry of tribal affairs i affairs of india have uh, initiated this or launched this e tribes and tribes india brand now what is this tribes india brand or what is trifid the trifid is tribal cooperative marketing development federation of india trifid so that is an acronym and uh, actually uh, we have many cooperative marketing departments or marketing uh, groupings or cooperative societies like we have the amul we have the nafed we have milma and many things are there which which are under the cooperative societies or cooperative groupings which will have a marketing nature and uh, that means they can they have some certain product and they will sell that under that brand name so trifid is such a kind of uh, cooperative marketing De development federation which majorly focuses on this tribal goods or goods made by tribal people or tribal areas so yesterday we have seen about saras fair saras fair is a holistic thing where rural people with their products will come to this fair and sell their products now this one is something related to that but it's not exactly the same actually here tribal people will be many tribes are there in india tribal people are having a gathering or a cooperative marketing federation where they will have a brand of different products see uh, there are many products if you if you see the amazon and snapdeal yeah, and just type tribes india then you can see lots of clothings and all those uh, yeah fashion accessories and uh, you know syrups and medicines and all those you know herbal herbal medicines herbal cosmetic things and many things are there uh, you, you have the coat you have the jacket you know the half handed coat and uh, many things are there under this brand tribes india so this is a very good thing actually if you see snapdeal or amazon then uh, it is having such a high quality and people are rating it as a you know uh, in in 4 to 5 range out of 5 so uh, it's a very good thing actually to have india's brand of this tribal people or tribal groupings of their products so it is again one step towards their rehabilit rehabilitation so uh, learn about tri trifid and what is it it's a multi state cooperative society it's a multi state actually inter state and under the ministry of tribal affairs so ministry you have to remember tribal affairs ministry it does what what it does promotes and markets tribal products tribal art and crafts now tribes india is a brand name uh, many things are there under this tribes india especially fashion things fashion items and uh, see they have they, they this is a logo of that and they also have syrups and many things herbal herbal formulations made of different plants and indigenous plants so and one thing you have to remember e tribes india is a collection of their websites or their marketing you know social grouping uh, uh, social media things and adi mahotsav is yesterday we have seen saras like that they also are having adi mahotsav where fair will be there craft expo will be there where these products will be uh, you know uh, kept to sell on uh, in many stalls so relate with saras news with this news so you, you are having two things one is rural and one is particularly tribal so that is how i told you re relate relate okay moving on to the next one down syndrome now down syndrome is uh, you know uh, it is autism and all those mental retardation and many things many many learning skill disabilities are there uh, even many indians are also affected with this kind of uh, diseases now down syndrome is one among them it's a mental retardation kind of disease and yeah this is purely genetical disorder it does not because of any environmental problem or any other uh, or organisms or no no pathogens are here it happens inside the body actually if gene gene mutates or gene changes its nature or chromosome changes its nature that is where uh, we have a, these are the examples of some of the genetic disorders now particularly down syndrome in the news because national conference on uh, down syndrome has has been started in delhi new delhi so uh, who who does that or who is who launches this national trust for welfare of persons with autism cerebral palsy and mental retardation and multiple disability disabilities under the ministry of social justice and empowerment so the ministry is important social justice and empowerment and the trust is important it, it is not by any medical council it is not by any medical association it is by they have a separate trust national trust now trust means they will having they, they will ha definitely have a funding mechanism so that is how you can you can uh, guess some statements trust means they will be having some fund right so national trust for 
this uh, uh, autism cerebral palsy and uh, mental retardation and uh, it is in collaboration with muskan now muskan is another initiative for uh, particularly for autism uh, affected patients now uh, about down syndrome down syndrome is a type of mental retardation as i told you and it is caused by extra genetic ma genetical material in chromosome so normally every chromosome has many genes uh, that genes are the those identities which make us so each person is unique in their nature because of the changes in the genes each and every human being in this world every single one are unique from each other that is because of this genes the genes are the main thing that in, uh, inherits from your uh, your parents that comes to you and that defines you so if there is any other extra genetic material or uh, you know by by nature itself uh, there there may be some uh, defects in your chromosome that create extra genes so that extra genes will uh, result in this kind of uh, down syndrome and autism and that kind of diseases so that is what happens normally we have 46 chromosomes right 23 pairs of chromosome so these person these people will have 47 chromosomes so that one extra chromosome with different genes will result or make this tampering in their disabilities like learning skills tare zamipar you have seen that movie in that many people uh, you know the pupils are there where they have some kind of disabilities learning skill disability or something so that is because of this extra chromosome now incidence of this down syndrome globally is 1 in 1000 and uh, you know uh, 1 in 1000 to 1 in 1100 births live births so that is very rare case actually and uh, some of the examples are given uh, please um, see the last line says about how mutations can happen what are the methods there are five methods actually you know by damage to chromosomes by a single error in a in a single gene by mutations in multiple genes so by mutations in multiple genes are major causes of heart diseases cancers and most of the cancers are caused by mutations in multiple genes and you also have mitochondrial diseases so mitochondria is a, is a component inside a cell which is an energy house so this is a pure biology topic uh, have some d diseases like sickle cell anemia is there autism is there and uh, cystic fibrosis is there heart diseases are there diabetes diabetes also is also one of mutation you know uh, our habits result in a mutation of uh, our habit itself mutates that is why cancer and heart disease are caused okay so uh, have some statements in your mind and have a thorough knowledge of this one too and uh, next one is about glyphosate and agrochemicals again this is a health subject uh, quickly saying uh, actually in central indiana uh, it's not india actually central indiana there was a survey conducted and uh, in the urine samples of many pregnant women glyphosate chemical was present now what is glyphosate glyphosate is a most popular herbicide that has been used in different parts of the world like in, in india we had the endosulfan case right in kerala in a particular district because of high usage of endosulfan many disabilities were there to born children so have a have a, have a refer of that endosulfan crisis now uh, this glyphosate is similar kind of thing which is dangerous to human being and particularly pregnant women are more infected with this so uh, now main why this glyphosate use was uh, you know tremendously increased because of the introduction of gm crops the gm crops are uh, you know they are genetically modified and they have genetic properties more more resistance to many microbes as well as many chemicals so uh, when the farmers found out that gm crops uh, uh, particularly in central india it was gm corn corn so uh, when they used it uh, they they this herbicide is especially used to prevent or to avoid uh, weeds and all those unwanted plants so they used herbicides and they found out that this gm corn was not resistant by that it it was not harmed so they used it like blanket spraying and that caused accumulation bioaccumulation and when it reached to human being it it resulted in a biomagnification of things so two terms you are having out of the static topic bioaccumulation and biomagnification learn that so that is how uh, this resulted in uh, this kind of numbers chemical numbers now agrochemicals see chemicals like glyphosate endosulfan and many other things totally they are called agrochemical whatever used for agriculture for preventing something or for killing some unwanted things that chemicals together they are called agrochemicals uh, actually insecticide pesticides fungicides herbicides biopesticides and fumigants and rodenticides are examples of this agrochemicals uh, each category you learn two or three names that that can be important and one final line see relate this to india's controversy over monsanto corp now monsanto corp 
what they did they introduced this gm uh, mustard so uh, many environmentalists are protesting against that and still it is not uh, yet released in india many indian organizations are telling that government organization telling that there is no problem in that but the environmentalists say that if gm mustard is introduced that may lead to an imbalance in many other crop cycle so that is why uh, uh, again uh, since two years we are hearing about this monsanto crop so have a relation with this with that okay so uh, moving on to the next news it's about uh, one of the caves in meghalaya krem puri caves now uh, you know uh, meghalaya has jaindi jaintia hills garo hills and uh, uh, you know khasi hills many are there uh, these are the names of tribes as i told yesterday now uh, this mausin ram in in the uh, rain shadow side uh, rainward side of e east khasi hills in meghalaya has many caves you know all the uh, many mountains in in meghalaya and that northeastern parts are having long caves you know uh, the caste topography and the cave formation you know that right stalactites and stalagmites geography topic again so this is a news because india has found out or meghalaya some adventure group has found out the longest cave in the world longest cave which is 24.5 5 km in length and till now the longest was Cuba del Saman in Venezuela actually that was like 18 point something kilometers now this this one recognized or rediscovered is 6 km more than that longer than that so uh, learn the name uh, nothing much Krem Puri caves and there are many like uh, they have estimated like 900 something caves in that in that area uh, in that northeastern area especially this uh, Meghalaya where there are, you have the Garo Kasia and Jaindia hills and uh, um, learn the statements also fossils of dinosaurs especially mosasaurus and uh, many other um, organisms that lived like 65 to 50 50 to 60 million years ago their fossils are found in this because this is purely sedimentary rocks now uh, fossils are mainly found in sedimentary rocks not igneous okay so these kind of things you can have uh, revision of static portions each line you can relate with some static portions that is how you study and revise so uh, as I told, don't by heart uh, all all the things. You have to relate and link link things. That is why I am telling again and again that uh, don't take it as a burden on you. It is very interesting to learn things. Okay, so uh, I am ending here. I am ending up here. See you again next time. Uh, have a nice day.